Well, 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 it appears that it is Friday again, which means that we're so thankful that Friday rocks, or hopefully it does. Hopefully you've had a good week. Hopefully you have something to look forward to. The way I think about it, I, I think about it like this. I was talking to my little brother. He's my nephew, but we're so close in age that he feels like my little brother. Um, as some of you know, like I'm a late in life child. Um, my siblings are like 20 years older than me. So all of my nieces and nephews are close to me in age. And so as I was telling my nephew, my little brother, you have to create rituals for yourself. You have to create your own mini holiday. You have to give meaning to the madness that is life. You know what I mean? Or else there's never anything to look forward to. You know, for some people, they're born into a certain type of society that has built in rituals, built in things to look forward to. Like they go to balls, they go to galas, they go to red carpet events, right? And it's like, those are wonderful. And we can aspire to those things if that's truly what we dream, truly what we desire. But the truth of the matter is that most of us will never really have those experiences or access to it. So we have to create like little joys, little happiness, little some kind of meaning, meaning for ourselves. Does that make sense? And I think a lot of people struggle with that. They go like, oh, my life feels like a little meaningless. I have nothing to look forward to. I have no purpose. It's because you haven't invented it yet. And so that's the beautiful thing about purpose is that it is so highly inventable. You just pick a thing and it can be your purpose. And you're like, well, what if I pick the wrong thing? Well, guess what? You picked it. You designed it. You can just pick another thing. It's like paint it. Paint the picture. If you don't like the color, repaint it. Simple. Life can be that simple. Um, but all of that to say... We gather here today and we gather here on Fridays because it's nice to have a little ritual. It's nice to try a little something different, chit chat about what's been going on in the week, what's been going on in the media, and it's been like a crazy week. Um, I don't even know what to delve into because I don't I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> there's been a <laughs> there's there's been a lot happening that I'm like, can we actually talk about these things? Um, I guess first and foremost. Um, RIP to Kyle. Kyle was a TikToker who was really well known in the pop culture and blind item segments. And uh, we learned earlier this week um, that she, she passed. And so all love and respect to Kyle, much love to her. Um, but a lot of people have been talking about the little rumble, the little, the little tussle, if you will, um, that she's been having with JLo. But I don't, I don't know if he's talk about that. Thank you for the TikTok universe, Tyler. Um, welcome everybody to the stream. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, like I put little warnings in some places, but I didn't put it in the Discord. I didn't put it in the. Um, I didn't send an email blast, so I don't know how many people are actually gonna join us. So I'm really excited. Hi, hi. Oh, I feel like I've known you for so long, Sedia, Cedia. I feel like I forgot how to say it. I'm so sorry. Um, so I don't know who all is gonna be here because I didn't send out the blast. I keep touching my hair because it's like. We talk about stuff and we try new stuff and I thought I was going to show you guys how I was putting up this new wallpaper but then I was like that's going to involve a lot of bending and kneeling and I was like I don't think I want to be kneeling on a live stream like I just I don't think that's the vibe and so then I was like what if we tried to do Hollywood curls which is why I keep touching my hair um if you are ADHD on the spectrum at all you know like we kind of one we we're kind of tactile people and I think a part of that tactile this is like when we think about things we're like here say not see sadia sadia first was right and so i was like maybe we can hollywood curl because i do have this um wand coral that i bought some time ago but i'm very nervous because i'm very not the most coordinated and i don't have the little glove thing that you're supposed to have um so i'm like i i don't know how it's gonna go if i actually and this is not like a I know there's a lot of TikTok shop activity. This is just what I decided to do today. This is not, I got this from Target um, for the cheap, for the low, low. And so I was like, maybe I'm going to try to Hollywood curl my hair. But also it's like everywhere today. I have been the victim of humidity as of recently. Thank you, AJ, for the TikTok universe. You guys are the best. Um, oh, thank you, the Duchess. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your energy and I always have like in the comment sections and all the stuff that I do. I really, really appreciate you. You're like the freaking best. <coughs> um, so 
but we're here. If you are newer to the space, um, feel free to, you know, join Discord. We always have like a decompress sesh on Discord after live streams. And like, that's where I'm going right now to let, to let them know that I'm actively live right now because I, I didn't announce it and that's on me. Um, so join us there if you would like to. We all, it's also just like a safe space, as I say, for the girls, the gays, and the theys. The guys, the, the cis guys can join us, but you have to disclose that you're a guy um, because there's channels that are religiously just for the girls, the gays, and the theys because it is a safe space. Um, but you can come talk to us in most of the channels. So feel free to do that if you like the chat. And so I'm just gonna ping this here. I'm live. Ah, and maybe I won't worry about email. I just hit the everyone thing in Discord. We'll see. But yeah, you know what's really, you know what, I'm, you know what, you know what, you know what? I'm really, I'm, I'm going to get down to the heart of it. I'm going to say what I really came here to say. Because I was like, sometimes I try to do little outlines, little pre-planning. But what always goes really well for me is just saying what I, what I feel, what I think. Look at my hair. God bless it. Um, and you know what actually, you know what's actually been on my noggin? I found, because I was like, do I have a catchphrase? I do have a catchphrase. I noticed when I look back. Do you guys know what my catchphrase is? Have you noticed? Unintentionally? It's like, so I've been thinking about, something I've been thinking about a lot. Something I've been thinking about a lot. I was like, do I join, did I, do I start every video in that way? I kind of compulsively, something I've been thinking about a lot. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Something I have been thinking about a lot is that Vox Media <laughs> reached out to me about um, an article that they were gonna do about Carrie Bradshaw because I did a series of videos talking about Carrie Bradshaw being a narcissist. And of course, it had mixed reception, right? Carrie Bradshaw is this lady that a lot of us. And I say us, but uh, baby millennial people, maybe some zennials who were right there in the middle. We grew up with her on a pedestal, which is what I said when I talked to this reporter. Because she was like, yeah, yeah, I'm writing this thing and I saw your video and I want your commentary. And so I was like, cool, let's talk about it. And so I understand why Carrie Bradshaw is on a pedestal. I get it. Uh, you grew up seeing her as the it girl. And if you're like me, you are not allowed to watch HBO in your house. I guess I'm going to turn this on just in case I decide. I do want to try it. I think we should try. You should just try hard things. We grew up, if you grew up in a household, you probably grew up in a household where you couldn't watch um, Smex in the City. It was on HBO. It was rated mature. Are all the things right and so it's like you grew up not knowing the content of the show is what I'm trying to say you grew up going to grocery stores and seeing Sarah Jessica Parker on magazine covers and just saw her as this it girl and you kind of understood Carrie and Sarah Jessica Parker to be like this brilliant ideal of success right she could have anything she was a writer she's in New York City she had fabulous clothes and of course the shoes she had girlfriends she had the job she had like a dating life um i don't think most of us knew the real storyline of her and big because again we're just seeing what the media is saying about her she was a girl i can admit that um I, I don't remember how old i was when i became aware of her but i remember seeing her everywhere but i do remember when i was 17 or 16 or something like that my friends and i snuck into sex in the city too um to because we we wanted to see what it's about none of us had ever seen it um <coughs> None of us had ever seen it. Um, and so Carrie has a glamour about her, no doubt. And what do young girls like? We like glamour, we like glitz, we like being sold the dream. But, you know, there finally came a time where I said, okay, let me go, let me go and see what this lady's actually about. And I watched it, and the first time I watched Sex in the City, you know, I don't think I, I don't know, I don't, I, I can't, I don't really remember, but I remember being a little confused. I was like, this is the love story. I think I had enough sense to get it. I think I said in the article that I first watched it at 20, oh, that's actually cute, um, that I, that I first watched it at like 22. So young, some dating experiences, but not a whole lot, right? Because I didn't date too much in high school. So college was the beginning and then I had like a long-term boyfriend. So I was like, okay, but I was still like a little confused. I should be using my mirror and not the, the screen. I'm using the camera. I got a mirror right in front of me and I'm using the camera. <laughs> this is gonna go wrong. 
Hello, Mira. Um, and so I think I was a little confused because I was like, oh, Big doesn't seem as into, into her as I was led to believe that he was. Because if you were paying attention, because I used to read Cosmo when I was younger. I wasn't supposed to. I did. I got those Cosmo magazines. I used to read Cosmo. And I just kind of thought of Big and Carrie as like this perfect couple. I just thought like, mmm, goals. Move to the big city. Get a writer job. Um, find find a big. You know what I mean? And so, <coughs> and so when I first watched it, I was like, this isn't actually as romantic as I thought it was going to be. We just knew the boss, but yes, exactly. I was like, but I was like, I don't know, but I'm still young. I'm still young. I was still young at that point. And so I was like, I still really liked her. And I kind of identified with her a lot at that point in my life. Because I think what really happens is like, so I understand Carrie Apologist. On one hand, y'all need to grow up. Carrie Apologist needs to grow the fuck up, okay? Because I feel like you are the actively the problems in your relationships if you still identify with Carrie at 28 plus without acknowledgement of what she is. But I understand it because at 22, I totally identified with Carrie. I got it. I was like, oh, she just wants true love and she'll get it at any cost because I was a true love at any cost girl. Um, I really had been through too much. I had like maybe one heartbreak for real, for real. But like I said, I had a long-term boyfriend. We were together for five years and like he, you know, he came from, and I'm saying the stereotypical stuff, but it is stereotypical. These things that I'm about to say do not equal automatically a person who is emotionally healthy and capable of attachment, but I'm just going to spew it because he was all of those things and stereotypes. He came from a two-parent household, right? He grew up in a new neighborhood, a new neighborhood, a good neighborhood. Um, his parents made good money. He never had real struggles in his life. He came from, like, his grandparents are still together. You know what I'm saying? Like, he grew up seeing healthy relationships. And so I was in a five-year relationship with that guy who was, you know, everything, my prince in shining armor. So I had not really been through a struggle. So that's the first thing I'm going to say. And so, but I still identified with Carrie because I was like, yeah, I get it. <coughs> I get it. But here's the thing. It's hard to know what toxic looks like sometimes until you've really seen it. Like you think you understand it. So like sometimes it's like, it's hard to know what toxic looks like until you had a healthy relationship. But to that I submit, it's also kind of hard to know what toxic really is when you've only had a healthy relationship because like you don't know how bad it can get. You should learn from other people. Thank you, Trey, for the TikTok universe. Um, you should learn from other people, but like, it's hard. So I didn't really know how bad it could get. So I, I don't know. And then I was young, so I couldn't really see Big's real red flags, but I did think it was kind of weird that they were like some back and forth. Um, I thought Charlotte was a bit of a snob in the beginning. Um, I really liked Samantha and I really understood, um, <laughs> Why am I, why am I blanking her name? Miranda. Like I knew why she was angry. I got that much. Um, but as time went by and I went through some things and I went through a lot of things like the breaking up of my friend group, um, which really was the first thing that really taught me like what it meant to be personally accountable in a, in a, in your girl friendships, right? Like what does it mean? Cause I think we all grow up with this internalized ideal that relationships with other women are supposed to be about enduring each other like women support women women endure other women and yeah i guess kind of mm. but like women are still people women are not like your emotional dumping donkeys that carry on your weight you know what i mean just like women are not the mommies of their boyfriends women are also not the mommies of their girlfriends right and i think what is lot there's a lot of great thing about girl culture and girl best friendships and girl code but something that's left out a lot is like what it means to honor the fact that your girlfriends are human beings your girlfriends have limits your girlfriends have boundaries they you know like i don't think that's taught a lot and so post-college i was learning that in real time because i was kind of like a bit of a, a big taker because at that point in my life I had not really addressed any of my own like childhood wounds as I talk about a lot now in this portion of my life back then you know like you go through it you move out you go to college if you go to college and then you're finally out in the real world and kind of got time to think but when you're going through college you're like who am I I don't want to flunk out you still got all this like childhood 
training is that the best way to say it yeah you got you got all that coding and you're moving so fast that you really don't have time to think about it and so it wasn't until after college that I was like oh man there's something not entirely appropriate about how needy I am and I say that gently because as soon as I say that people are like oh so you're not supposed to be able to need your friend calm down breathe breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out thank you for the TikTok universe Marley breathe in breathe out okay breathe in breathe out that's not what that means that's not what that means thank you for the TikTok universe crystal uh that's not what that means right it's like no it means like you don't need to be waterboarding people with emotional needs 24 7 because they got their own stuff too right that's what that means and so I realized that my the fact that I'd not yet really addressed the fact that I was putting all this weight on all my people like my the boyfriend I had at that time my closest friends because there's like this hole in me because I had not addressed like the childhood trauma stuff and so I was like oh okay um I am expecting my chosen family my people to like fix me and that's not their job they can support me they can hold my hand through it they can be my ride or die but it's not their job to actively try to fix me that's not fair that's not it that's not the vibes that is not the vibes you know what I mean that's not it and so when I started going through that portion of my journey I'm like slowly getting back to curl like my hair sweat so bad um back when I was bleaching my hair all the time my hairdresser used to like give me a list of instructions of things I couldn't could and could not do before I came in because as she was like processing my hair my scalp so much heat would be coming off of my scalp that it, my hair would process way too fast and so for whatever reason my scalp lets off a lot of heat I'm a hothead <laughs> literally so I'm like oh I can't like there's actively sweat coming off of my hair which is also why my hair frizzes up a lot like people are like oh she's nappy she doesn't comb my hair like babes no it just I heat off of my scalp all day it just is what it is um anyways but as I started moving through that stuff I was like mm, okay well I can see where I was just waiting for somebody else to be responsible for the heavy things that I didn't want to address and as I started moving through that I started seeing Carrie differently I started seeing that girl was 33 at the start of the series that's the that's the worst part you know because I was like oh yeah I identified with her when I was 22 when I was 22 I identified with the behavior of a 33 year old woman and that's not to shame anybody who has like their heavy big emotions or even like mood disorders as some people have said but at, like at 33 and at Carrie's big age and with Carrie's access because let me say this Carrie is not like the you are protecting Carrie because you're seeing yourself you're seeing your lack of access to mental health materials your lack of act you are not Carrie Carrie's not you Carrie is a white woman living in like so within society of New York in Manhattan with designer y'all are not the same at her big age with her big access with her man big she should have been doing a lot more for herself okay she was right like you're you're standing in front of a woman for defending her from the train the consequence of her actions because you feel a little identified with her when she um she would have she would have walked over you right if she passed you on Fifth Avenue she would have she would spit on you probably she would say Ooh, you're dirty don't touch me did you see the episodes the way she would talk to like um the 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 trans women who were like you know work workers she they the, bad vibes and people like yeah it was a sign at the times the 90s yeah it's still bad vibes baby it's still you know like yes a sign of the times culturally appropriate but something can be culturally appropriate and still wrong like what do you mean what are you talking about like that's why we changed it because it was wrong like what on earth do you mean oh I didn't realize I didn't have I wasn't I didn't have access to the YouTube chat if you guys have said hi hello I just <laughs> I haven't been looking at the YouTube chat. I thought it was going to show up on this page. But hello, YouTube people. I'm so glad that you're with us, all two of you. I'm so freaking excited. No, I'm serious. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm excited. But, like, people stand in front of this girl. Like, this girl would not be worth... I just don't understand that. Anyways, but, like, 
at her big age is the real takeaway right now when it comes to Carrie. At her big age, Carrie was 33. I just want you to let that ruminate. Still older than I am now, right? And she, at the beginning of the series, was still like trying to get back at men who hurt her by sleeping with them. Girl. <laughs> like, is she was still body shaming Samantha. Girl, she was still shaming Charlotte for not wanting to date losers. Girl, you know what I'm saying? Like, people, like, what do, what do you mean? Like, I need you to think about, like, y'all will watch Sex in the City and be like, yeah, I get Carrie. Carrie makes sense. And y'all will be, like, ages 19 to, like, 26. And I'm like, y'all, Carrie was 33. M money in the bank account because she's buying it buying stuff she didn't need to buy but it's like let's let's just can we like attempt to be a little more for real just a smidget of a little more for real like Carrie I don't know it just it doesn't make sense so they'll stand in front of her for those reasons but like I need you to think about the fact that it's like if I at what 24 25 was like oh there's a better way Carrie also could have been like ah there is all there's a better way she just didn't care she didn't want to do the work because why? And so I theorized that she was a narcissist because I'm like, narcissists for all intents and purposes are people who can't like really see themselves and their impact on other people. And so when I see somebody constantly going through the same struggle, I say somebody, but I mean a character, not people, people. Uh, but when I see like a character going through the same struggle, never learning anything, she never grew because people are like, well, Carrie grew, Carrie grew. C Carrie did not grow. Carrie was the same person through and through and this little this Vox media thing was like well that's the point yeah and so if you agree that that's the point then why are you so pissed off that I am talking about it like the article just came across as like I'm so mad that this girl identified narcissistic traits in this this character that I wanted to be when I grew up completely missing the point that you can want to be like Carrie and you can learn from her lessons and you can grow the fuck up I'm gonna say I said it said the F word please don't demonetize me <laughs> like grow up like that's that's really what it comes down to like let's be so f for real okay also i'm gonna take this thing i'm missing the email blast so people know that i'm live on youtube uh that will we are live live now da, 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 da. okay i'll be discussing Why? Uh, <laughs> uh, sending emails on live, that's it's not the bit. Identifying, uh, I think I'm about to spell this word wrong because I'm thinking too hard about by As narcissistic, that's also an equally difficult word to spell. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. Is it's not sexist. <laughs> is as <laughs> tee -hee. Okay, so I'm sending uh, my list, my email list, the stream, and then I'm gonna read some comments. Ah, it might not make a difference. I think it's just not pop. Oh my god, hi Gia. Okay, wait, I didn't send it. I'm hitting send now. Okay, but my point is, like, the whole point of me identifying her traits as narcissistic, it does hinge on the fact that she was 33. So it's like, you're focused on the fact that you're 22 and you're identifying with her, but it's like, she's she's 33 and she hasn't really learned anything. She doesn't, or maybe she has, she just doesn't care because it doesn't benefit. The problem with Carrie Bradshaw is that it doesn't benefit her to change because everybody is kind of like folding themselves around her. Like, they're just letting her trample them it's almost like all the girls are so trauma bonded with Carrie that like they can't really acknowledge the how harmful she is which is kind of like um I, I feel like like a mother wound it's like this ideal that like I need my caregiver to love me so bad I need their acceptance so bad that I'll take anything right um which is kind of a bit of what I talked about in consequences of girlhood um and so it's like the girls react to Carrie like that and it's like everybody's so focused on she's so cool like everybody thinks in their head that if they bumped into a narcissist they'd be able to identify it which is why there's like 
that's which is part of why people are like oh it's so icky that people are all call everything narcissism and then they talk about all the stuff they think is narcissism and then they see Carrie Bradshaw they're like no this is just a good person <laughs> this is a this is a measured study somebody said she's very um somebody said she was what really well actualized Carrie Bradshaw is well actualized like thank you for the TikTok universe the woman who was like said yes to a proposal and then broke out in hives and like this what like it's like where you watching you're so focused on the fact that it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to be imperfect it's okay um but it up but this girl was 33 learning hard lessons and didn't care and it's like consistent because a lot of times with people who they are is who they are is who they are right they show up in the world the same way all the time basically how they deal with relationships is how they deal with career is how they deal with money and it's like constantly showing you like she there's something there's something uh what's the word there, there's something parasitical that's not a word I'm, i've decided it's a word girl parasitical about perry perry carrie bradshaw <laughs> um oh comments hi youtube people peace thanks for announcing on discord youtube didn't notify me thank you yeah thank you for being here and thank you for the the tiktok universe um uh, in their reaction yeah do whatever is how a narc victims react exactly you know what i'm saying and so it's like i just found it so fascinating that in the video which i get so in the video i just go through here are the traits that i believe are narcissistic yay thank you <laughs> here are the traits that i believe are narcissistic in carrie bradshaw here are the ways i feel like she harmed her friends here's how i i i, I d felt like she was indifferent to the pain she caused people thank you for the universe um and here's how she negatively impacted people and everybody lost their minds because Carrie Bradshaw is your god for some reason. I don't know. Like, she's kind of the biggest loser I've ever seen. Anyways, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and back to the article. And then when you read it, and somebody said it before I did. I kind of felt this way, but it felt illegal to say, thank you for the gift, Scarlett. Uh, somebody was like, it feels like she saw your video and made the article about it. And honestly, I agree because the name of the article is like, that's kind of, what is it? It's like, uh, Carrie Bradshaw being a bad person is kind of the point. It's like a response to my, it's the, I guess she was like, hey, um, instead of just leaving a comment about how I don't like this, I'm going to write a media piece about this. And it would have been more interesting to me if like she walked through the criticisms and all the things and broke it down and then kind of talked about why she agreed and disagreed without creating kind of this parallel between like, the only reason a person would dislike Carrie is sexism, which is how it's set up. It's so interesting. I love how the media will say things without saying it because uh, what it does, it'll take a quote from me because the reporter interviewed me directly and she says, and so she does take a di quote, direct quote where it says, um, where I criticize her and how she behaves and how she treats people and then it, period. And then the very next line she writes, most hyper hyper criticisms of carrie bradshaw can be traced back to a, sus, a sexist attitude so it's kind of like i'm gonna say that katie's sexist but i can't say that because i'll be li liable or slander but i'm gonna put them so close together and then it goes on to say people will praise tony soprano and so it says people so i'm not people i'm not people but people in general what people what people what people and so i was also like why do you think that tony soprano has the same fan base as carrie bradshaw i think that's a very interesting choice um i okay and so the, it's it was just like very interestingly read it felt written it was very interestingly written it kind of just felt like a knee-jerk reaction to i don't like what's being said and i need to defend carrie bradshaw with all that i have which all for it but like what is Carrie giving you other than like what to look out for in yourself and in your friendships negatively at first you know what I'm saying because it's like I just can't because because uh, I think it quoted something about she stay she being beside one of the girls during a surgery oh she stood beside Samantha while she had cancer I'm like that doesn't make her a saint that just makes her a human being right like that doesn't erase the fact that she stumps around treating everybody like ish there's a creator named um Cecilia Regina 
and then there's some numbers behind her I can't think of the numbers right now but she talks about this a lot it's like she treated those girls like crap does not make sense in the slightest it's like I wouldn't treat my dog the way Carrie Bradshaw treats her friends like there's no consideration of their humanity and their needs even like Charlotte's wedding Charlotte's wedding it's all about her breaking up with her boyfriend and all. like it's messy Carrie is messy for no good reason at 33 34 35 it doesn't mean you can't be a mess at that age but can you be can you make new mistakes can you be a mess in a different way can we get some new mess going on some new drama some new height like why is it the same stuff at 18 23 and I guess maybe her point is like well women are allowed to be imperfect yes I'm so glad she's, you wrote that Kendall because I also wrote that I also wrote that all of the characters show flaws and imperfections and the reason I particularly talked about Carrie Bradshaw showing narcissistic traits is because it's because it's not about the fact that she's flawed it's about the her continuous lack of empathy lack of consideration for the humanity of other people even 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 after she ruins this young girl's marriage she's like stalking her trying to force forgiveness on her hello if somebody doesn't want your apology leave them the f alone if you care more about giving an apology than you do about the discomfort of the person receiving it then you don't you're not trying to make it better you're trying to make yourself feel better it's like what was not narcissistic about carrie carrie put herself in thousands of dollars in debts over some shoes and she writes an article about herself and her friends and all the time I think do her friends give her permission to publish these stories about their love life because mind you the voiceover is her writing the article so she might have changed the names and so you know there's maybe there's a world of consideration that these girls aren't actually named Charlotte Samantha Miranda these are just names she gave them in the article but she's writing about their love lives for material to get paid nothing basically pennies you know it's like what was not narcissistic about her what was and to me a complicated character a complicated female character an interesting character is a character that has the ability to change and we don't see it what you feel the more that you watch Carrie is tired you feel waterboarded and some people will say that's the point you're supposed to feel I'm like yeah maybe that is the point but like I can't if I criticize her I'm a sexist I was like let's come back to that Ken Ken because like he, you didn't just say that's the point like if she would have just wrote it like that's the point you're supposed to be sick of her and she's never supposed to change that'd be one thing but it's it's the specific verbiage of if you criticize her if you call a spade a spade if you talk about narcissism and female friendships if you don't want to continuously take on the emotional burden and weight of women just who won't change will not change do not care about how they impact you do not care about your life or your feelings they want you as a circus as a audience to what they've got going on like that's bad you're I'm sexist because I said that's a problem divest divest right so you, she conflated so many very different things and she's like okay the point is that she doesn't change and she sucks but you're sexist if you talk about it let's be a little more for real like okay all right you moved to new york to become a writer for vox because you loved carrie bradshaw i'm so sorry i insulted your god my bad <laughs> didn't know i didn't know we were still making gods out of characters on television my bad babe okay got it but if your god is flawed why does it offend you that deeply and is this not a moment for reflection to think about why does this injure me and hurt me so bad that somebody might criticize carrie bradshaw because it's like we're just talking about characters on the internet it's okay you'll be all right you'll go home and it's not just the writer it's all the people in the comment sections who were losing their mind like people were calling me everything but a child of god because i said carrie bradshaw is kind of narcissistic uh, it's kind of bad babes like and she doesn't know herself I think people are so focused on the fact that, well she's such a victim in her relationship with big but you know babes you can be a victim in one situation and a bad person in the next in fact I would I would challenge you I would I would submit that a lot of people who act like villains in one relationship 
are actually like victims in other relationships because like you know energy transfers so it's like oh my boyfriend is genuinely very mean to me and since I can't you know punish him for his bad behavior without exiting the relationship because I'm not ready to go I'm just gonna put that negative energy towards people at my job I'm gonna be mean to people on the street I'm gonna be mean to wait staff I'm gonna be mean to my friends and so it's like yeah that happens but why is why is that okay with you it's like just because there's a reason for why somebody behaves the way they do it doesn't mean it's okay to accept it and that it doesn't need to change and people and then people will go like oh well it's just a show well um it, it's just a show but it was also just a show when you decided to write and publish an article about me being a sexist <laughs> like uh, so either we're going to talk about it or we're not like it's but we talk about media and we talk about characters as an evaluation of real life. It doesn't matter that these people's not real. These people aren't real. These are real scenarios that women really live. Like women want to see stories about women, what we experience, what our lives are like. People want, that's the whole purpose of representation. So what do you mean? What do you mean? What are you saying? What do you mean? Pick a side. You can like somebody and want them to grow. One of my favorite TV villains, because also decide if she's a villain, an anti-hero, or the hero because she's kind of all over the place with that. She's like, yeah, this is a protagonist. She's supposed to be an anti-hero and then she compares her to a serial killer and a mob boss. Uh, and so you know, well, that way. So one of my favorite protagonist villains is a uh, villainine from Killing Eve. Love her. Love her down. But if somebody were to make a video about her being a psychopath and criticize her, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't attack, I wouldn't feel personally hurt by that. <laughs> it's always it just really, really confusing. And so I said, I was at lunch with somebody yesterday and I was like, I want to talk about this, but I feel like as soon as I talk about it, people are going to think that I just feel really butthurt because I didn't like what the article said. I mean, I don't like what the article said, but it's like, but it's also like, I, I can get behind, um, a good, a well-formed argument most times like can you say can you explain this in a, a level balanced measured way even if your logic is bad can you at least keep consistent logic because even bad logic has the ability to be consistent and so it's like when people keep changing logic that's when I lose like a little respect for the conversation that's what happens a lot of time in my comment sections it's like people will use one set of logic they'll be like well you know men should be able to sleep around but women can't. So then they suddenly change the logic. And so now we have our problems. It's like, mm, it's the change of logic for me. And so a lot of times it, there's a few things compounding. Somebody says something rude or mean about me and their logic is bad. And so I respond to the bad logic and everybody's like, oh, okay, this is a bad sport. She's just egotistical. And even if I were, okay, first off, like it's weird to me that you think it's a negative thing for somebody to want to stand up for themselves why don't you try it like it's like we've we've really really like internalized this ideal that to be a good person you have to turn the cheek you have to accept it you have to not talk back you know why they taught you that because they want to be able to trample on you without you pushing back the powers that be religion all of them thank you for the tiktok universe they wanted you to be able to be complacent in your own misery your own subjugation. Hello. Why would why would the people who want to oppress you and keep you under their foot teach you how to rise up and above? Let's be for real. So why would religion, education, and all these structures exist to teach you how to empower yourself? Huh? So it's like you have been taught that there's virtue in letting yourself be beat up because like they want to beat you up. What you talking about? And so even if I was only talking back to people, arguing with people because I feel offended, okay? Yeah. Who like who who am I supposed to, who's supposed to defend me? Am I, am I supposed to hate myself? I'm supposed to dislike myself enough to let people talk about me in my face? What you do on your own time, your own business on you. But like you in my comment section on my page, friend, you're not about to talk about me in my own house. Uh, you're going to come see about me. Either I'm going to delete you, block you, or I'm going to check you. It's one of the three. And people are like, oh, she's so sensitive. She's just, I so care about myself. Unlike you, sir, who saw my video got deeply triggered instead of like scrolling, because it's usually men. Instead of scrolling, you came and you commented and you wanted to tussle a little bit because you're like, oh, this hurt my feelings because I, I, I hate myself. And so whenever a woman talks about a negative experience with a man, I feel personally attacked. Unlike you, sir, who hates yourself, I actually don't and so I'm not gonna sit here and be addressed negatively you're gonna get deleted blocked or I'm gonna tussle you back idiot 
They're like, oh, you took it personally. It was personally said to me, dum dum. There's so many people in this world that hate themselves so bad that they've made it a virtue. They're like, well, I personally hate myself, so I'm a good person, and you're a narcissist and an egomaniac for loving yourself, which kind of brings us back to Carrie. It's almost like people are like, Carrie just is a strong female character that loves herself. No, she actually hates herself and <laughs> because she feels... She loves being punished by big. She loves the drama. She loves the toxicity. And whenever somebody gives her bad, good advice, she gets angry. So a lot, and that's the other point I made about her having narcissistic ways is that, you know, every time like Charlotte or Miranda or somebody tries to talk some sense into her, she goes low. She doesn't even address what they say to her. She finds the trigger. So she takes our vantage point as a person with intimate knowledge of these women's lives and she uses that against them right like one thing I talked about in my video and in the article was that it's not that somebody tells Carrie don't go back to big and she has a tantrum and says but I love him and it's my right that's not what Carrie says they say Carrie don't go back to big and Carrie says well that's why you're insecure about your husband never loving you what kind of psycho stuff is that you know what i'm saying like she's not having measured conversations the person who they're so deeply triggered and hurt by the conversation they that they 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 throw a curveball what's it called when somebody derails a conversation because they're uncomfortable that's what carrie does carrie doesn't stay on topic if you came to carrie and you said hey carrie uh, I think your dress is see-through. You might want to get like a shawl or something like that. Carrie, like, well, that's why you have gum in your hair. Carrie Bird, Carrie Babe, Carrie Babe. What does that have to do with anything? Like she goes, she purposely hurts people for the sake of like avoiding accountability. And you're upset that I was like, this girl kind of narcissistic. That hurts your feelings that deeply. That's so wild to me. That is so wild to me. And honestly, I mean, like, if Carrie is your God, Carrie is your God and you're doing a really good job because, you know, you took the, the criticisms of her being narcissistic and you're like, that's why you're sexist. Even if I were, even if I were, Broken Clock is right twice a day. <laughs> Doesn't mean the criticism of her is wrong just because it came from the wrong place. Hi, Jamisha. We're talking about, so I had a video about Carrie Bradshaw that went super, super viral, um, where I talked about she had narcissistic traits, that she disrespected her friends, the way she treated people. I was like, here are all the things that are narcissistic about her. And um, Vox Media wrote an article about that conversation and then said that my discussion of Carrie Bradshaw was inherently sexist because she's supposed to be a flawed cult character to which I said okay if you agree that she's supposed to be a flawed character then why am I a sexist for discussing it she said um so why are we discussing Carrie Bradshaw and not Tony Soprano because I don't fucking watch that show what do you mean like what um like me talking about Bradshaw means that I love Tony Soprano and she did say people she didn't say Katie but it's like why are you assuming these were the same audiences so that's what we were talking about while I try to figure out how to like one curl my hair um, and on YouTube, reality was Carrie's, Carrie's kryptonite 100% with, and that's how narcissists behave, you know, and I'm speaking from a place of lots of experiences with them, especially in women, regrettably. Um, it just is what it is. And so it's like, it's not something to fall all down about. You don't have to fall out. You don't have to feel sad. You don't have to fall apart. It's okay. It's okay. And somebody calling, um... Carrie narcissistic and you liking her and wanting to be like her doesn't mean that you're inherently narcissistic I can't see the back of my head um but it does mean maybe watch out for that like what do you what do you mean it's like it's like people don't know how to have measured like reactions to things like it's okay I don't think I'm gonna do the back of this um because my hair is so short in the back I had a crazy haircut it was a, a bob and so it's long in weird places and shorter in the other and like I can't see the back of my head and I'm gonna burn myself but anyways so it's like it just it doesn't make sense and it also kind of like brings me back to this thing that I think about a lot how people have really weird attachments to things based on like 
their childhoods. And so it's like the thing that they didn't get enough of in their childhood or the thing that they wish they could have been in their childhood or grown up to be, they'll attach to like the fictional version of that. Um, and I mean, we all kind of do it to a degree. And it's very interesting because it's like the things and people and figures that people like defend, like even like people's mass support or of rhymes with Frump. It's like they see him and they want to be as powerful as him. And so they will like fall on a sword for him even when he's wrong because it's like they want to be him. And then there's something about supporting the person that you want to be like that makes people feel good. And sometimes that's okay. Thank you for the TikTok universe. You know, I definitely had people that I looked up to. When I was growing up, I was really into Christina Aguilera, especially in her dirty era because of I, I grew up in like a highly religious background and this ideal of this woman who like had self autonomy and overcame all the stuff that people that made sense to me and I attached to her and those ideas. Um, I don't know that I would have been fighting anybody for Christina Aguilera, but it did bother me when people didn't like her. You know what I mean? So like, I get it. Oh, I get it. But if somebody was like, I don't know, like if somebody brought up like a valid criticism of her that kind of made sense, especially as an adult, because we are, are adult people. I look at my analytics. I look at my analytics. It's not children. It's not even it's not even primarily the 18 to 24 crowd. My primary audience is 25 to 34. Y'all grown. Y'all are grown. Y'all are y'all y'all are grown. Y'all are grown. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect, but you are grown. You do have to take accountability. That's something. And I know it's hard because a lot of times in your 20s, the early 20s, you don't know what you don't know. You're just here vibing and having the experiences that will one day lead to you thinking more critically. And so it usually is in that 25 to 34 range where things start to come home a little bit. And you're like, hmm, there might be a different way, right? I get that. But it's like maybe... The appropriate reaction to experiencing triggers and shame and feeling bad about the way that it was, the way that it is, is not attacking the messenger for forcing you to face yourself. Because that's all it is. Because I always say most people who beef with me have beef with themselves. Because a lot of time it's like, mirror! I'm like, look at the mirror. I hold up a mirror with these conversations. And people are like, I don't like this. And they start fighting. They st I'm like, babe, you're fighting your own reflection. Because nine times out of ten, I, I haven't come on and said something crazy like, all people this, all da da da, da. I'll be like, people who do this, da 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 da, and they fall all apart, and they self-identify by tussling with me. Because I didn't, did I etch you? Did I etch you? If I edit you, I didn't know, because I didn't call you by name, but I did call you by trait. I didn't call you by name, but I did call you by habit. I didn't call you by name, but I did call you by experience. And I never, ever, ever would have known your name went with that trait, behavior, or experience until you told me. You told me that this is your story. You told me that this is how you behave. You are, you personally convicted yourself through your interactions with me. And now you're angry. Like, so you're saying that I'm da 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 da. Did I say it? I talked about a high level idea, and then you felt attached to it. Hmm. And sometimes I tussle back because I can and I know some of them don't really have the stomach that they don't have the stomach for the fight that they're starting. And I so what I do is like, what's the difference between a troll who just wants attention and somebody who's deeply triggered and wants to hurt me back? But it's like you can't hurt me back for a few reasons. You can't hurt me back because one, you don't know what I value and you don't know what I fear. And then two, if I have shared a value or a fear, it's not an open wound. You're fighting with me because my content showed you an open wound. And I am I have enough cognition to not put anything on the internet that is actively harming me. You can't beat me up. You can't make me feel bad for what I already know. Like, they'll come onto a video. And mind you, I film with the camera facing me. The screen is, I can see myself when I film. And so they'll come into a video of like, oh, your hair sticking up. Yeah, I saw that when I filmed and looked at it and hit publish. Drag. Ooh, look at you. Burr, meanie. Burr, look at you. Ooh, my hair sticking up. Ooh, I have natural hair. Ooh, I have black people hair. What a drag. I have black people hair that gets all, that is anti-gravity. Ooh, you got me burn right like they'll come on and say something that i know they're like oh your eyelashes are like sticking up yeah oh you 
got me. I guess I'm gonna log off now. I guess I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna take the video down. You did it. I'm gonna delete my page now. We, like what it was like what are you going through what are you going through what are you going through i was you know you're scrolling through and i'm like carrie not bradshaw had some narcissistic traits and you're like that's why your hair is sticking up and both can be true <laughs> cool thank you i'm visible that's great thanks for confirming you know what i'm saying like what it's like what are y'all even talking about sometimes like what what does it mean what does it mean what does it mean you know what i'm saying like it's just it's just ridiculous thank you adam for the TikTok universe i'm doing this not because i think this is what a universe looks like i do think it's what a universe looks like the heart is the universe of the person Ooh, deep <laughs> um but because it's like love you thank you thanks um but it's like, I, I think people, it's like people who are so focused on hurting people, people who are more focused on hurting people than putting that energy into being better. Like, to me, they are, they feel like lost causes to me. That doesn't mean that they are, doesn't mean that you should regard them that way, but it does mean that I have no interest in investing energy there. And I run into that a lot, even in my personal life, even with things within my family. There are people who are like, um, they'll be just really mean to me because like they want me to help them with things that it is their job to do. And I'm like, I don't have capacity for that because I'm still figuring something out, but I support you and I love you. And then also we have beef. Um, thank you, Jasmine, for the hearts. Also, we have beef because I won't neglect myself to help them. And it's like, now you put energy into being mean and harm like you could have taken that same energy and done something a little more positive for yourself you could have done it you could you so the minute people take energy to be negative for somebody from not lifting them up without ever accessing any energy towards being better that tells me that person doesn't want to change thank you for the tiktok universe they never wanted to change they wanted an excuse they wanted somebody to blame they wanted to ask you for help and either you help them and they, oh, I still don't get it, stupid tourists. Uh, and you just kind of spend your whole life dragging them along and they never have to do it. Or they ask you for help and you say no. And now it's your fault that they can't do it. People do that. That's why it's like you can't get caught up in a savior complex because it's like most people who need somebody to be a savior to them as in like just hold their hand and do the work for them. Like they're never gonna do it because like to me savior complex isn't about saving people who want to be saved because for the most part people want to be saved when they interact with inspiration when they interact with a truth a reality a path an opportunity they might be scared they might not do it right away but they're not gonna be angry at you you know what i mean like there's a difference like they might want your support they might want to be called in to be loved they might want to be reaffirmed they might ask questions they're hungry for it but they're not gonna like tussle with you and beat you up and i think that's something i had to figure out as a person who likes to talk a lot because that's really all it is and so what it is is that i am a person who grew up and saved themselves and fixed things for themselves and problem solved for themselves and so i learned a lot through doing but i also talk a lot and so i also end up talking about how to do things a lot of times like okay this is how you figure out how to get enough money for your first apartment this is how you move out of your parents house this is how you go to college here's how you get uh, a scholarship here's how you get money if you didn't i figure this stuff out and I like to talk and so people will hear me talk about these things and be like okay do it for me no like somebody once was like oh I heard you got a grant and they did not proceed to ask me how I got it they said can you fill out a grant application for me no I don't have time to do that right they're like they didn't go can you tell me how you found it they said can you look for a grant for me you know what I mean? Like it's there's a difference because people will say that I'm being mean, but no, these these are not usually people who are like help. They, the way they describe help sounds a lot like do it for me, right? And there there's people who will be like, um, I I don't know, like, but do do you get kind of like the example that I, I'm that I'm giving? Like there are people who like 
they have a victim complex to the point where they have decided to not participate and even in the era of my life where i was naive to do these things for people like if i just carry these people long enough eventually they'll recover enough to where they can walk for themselves they usually never walk for themselves they just you just keep carrying them until you both are depleted and then when you're both depleted they're mad at you for being depleted <laughs> they're not even grateful they're not sorry they don't feel bad they're mad at you and then if you go well i need help too then they're like well i'm a victim and so it's like it's don't get caught up which also brings us back to carrie bradshaw it's like whatever whatever um hang-up she may have because also what are her real hang-ups they never address that in the show the show is literally just about her life in new york city in chasing that man like it's not like they ever go back and show Carrie's childhood about how her mother was mean her dad was absent they don't do that so like also because people like well she had a hard life she was a victim if she had a hard life and she was a victim it's because she was running behind big big was not running behind her if she would have stopped chasing big he might at some point have looked back and like, oh, you're not chasing me. But like he would not have, he was barely pursuing her as is. Like, and that's what a lot of girlies will do. And I'm going to say it because people are like, you say girlies and it's me. Okay, maybe I should be mean. However you need to hear it. There's a TikToker out here is going to say it nice. I'm going to say it mean if that's me. It's a lot of girlies out here who they will claim that they personally it doesn't mean it doesn't happen they will claim that they personally are like being abused they're like well maybe i chase him because he's abusing me because they know that's a thing but it's usually a lot of them that's not the deal for them it's just like the man doesn't put in any energy into her negatively or good and she's like and she just keeps going back because she wants him to and i mean that's a thing and that's valid but it's like please as an abuse survivor please don't call um it of you going back being trauma bonded and it might be a form of that but it's like you're not getting beat up dude it's like it's not nice it's not kind it shouldn't be happening to you but you are not in a situation where you're financially rely relying on this person they don't hold the key to anything you can actually leave it's just hard and it's okay that it's hard and you're not a bad person because it's hard and i don't think less of you because it's hard but it's doable that's that's all i want people to get through it's not impossible it's hard but it's not impossible there's a difference there are people out here who literally can't leave because they would have nothing and, then, and they still do it and it doesn't mean that everybody has to put themselves in a bad place i'm not talking about that but i'm just saying even when they compare themselves to women who are who have nothing and can't leave and can't go like everyday women like that still figure it out but you're not there if you never call that man again he would never call you again but you want to hide behind well abuse exists it does exist it does exist but that is not your story oh cute outfit you know uh somebody asked me about it up here is it's a bunny it's like it's both overalls and a dress so it is so like it's overall so this is a shirt that i have on underneath it and it's overalls but it's like it is a, a dress thing I wear something underneath it but it, it's both overalls and a dress it's both and the ears are movable <laughs> it's very cute I really enjoy it it's a lot of fun um, and so yeah <laughs> so it's like it's okay to acknowledge that something's hard I get it I get it do you know how many people like to me uh, breaking up and getting somebody out of your life that needs to not be in your life is like a, a lot of steps like I don't think you should ever expect that a person you had deep feelings with that you have a lot of deep connection with that you're gonna cut them off and feel nothing but like you have to be aware of your behavior right you have to be aware of your behavior like if you need to go back and talk to them after you cut it, them off maybe that is okay but be aware that you are just kind of scratching an itch and don't do this thing where you reattach just because here they are and you start following under the influence of how it feels i think there's something interesting that happens when you walk back to something you walk away from and you're able to see it from a different place now like i i, I do that sometimes like like when uh after I, I feel the emotional break thing so i won't do it when i'm emotional when i really miss them and i feel like i need them i'll never call i'll journal i'll cry i'll write a song i'll call a friend i'll even say hey 
Um, I'll, I'll text somebody and say, hey, you don't ever have to read this, but I need to say this to a human being or I'm going to call them right now and I know it's going to be a mistake. So in the height of the emotional wave, I will never contact them. But once I have the big blowout, cry, mourn, where I, I'm like, I feel abandoned, I feel lost, I feel like I'll never love again, I'll get all that out of me. Once that moment happens and I can kind of come back up to reality, then after some time goes by, I might entertain them just to see that it does feel different. Like, hmm, I don't feel like if I don't have them, I'll die. Cool. I'm so excited. Thank you, Paul. And so it's like, I don't think there's something inherently bad about reaching out to or contacting periodically people that you were in love with. But when you're in the height of attachment, chasing, you want it back, that's not the moment. And so that said, it's, it's okay to be imperfect. It's okay to not quite be at the end of an emotional cycle that's not what we're shaming but we are saying you do have to choose differently you're never gonna if you are in love with somebody attached to them you're using that l word rumors or whatever you're never gonna wake up and feel like leaving them alone. you're never gonna wake up and feel like leaving them alone you're never gonna feel that because also the brain is a pattern just like if you eat sugar every day every day for most of your life you're never going to wake up one day and feel like not eating sugar. You just have to decide not to do it. You have to break the habit. Like, and people get that when we talk about food, but they pretend like we're insane when we say that about relationships. You have to leave that man if you want something different because you're never going to feel like, well, I just love him. You feel that way. Feelings can give you a lot of information, but feelings are not king. Feelings should be 100% in a conversation with your brain and what you know you want and what feels right. Because a lot of times you'll feel like you love them, but you'll also feel like being with them is wrong. And so it's like, no, your heart is not saying you want them. Your attachment needs feels like you want them. Your fear of abandonment feels like you want them. Your heart is telling you this is hurting. This is painful. This is more harm than it's worth your heart is like we got to get up we got to get out stop calling bullshit your heart okay like that's like ugh. heart is out here like i'm being slandered i've said none of this heart is on your side it's your attachment issues that make you chase after things that hurt you it's your fear of abandonment it's your ego it's your need to be validated it's your fear of rejection it's your fear of standing apart and alone it's your fear of vulnerability it's fear because if that were not true, you would not feel like the relationship is bad. You would have no conflict. Like if you just felt like you wanted to be with them, you wouldn't be rubbing up against this uh, this thing where it's like, oh, this feels kind of bad. This feels kind of uncomfortable. You wouldn't even be able to acknowledge that. You're like, because like we see that sometimes where people are being mistreated and they don't seem to be able to notice it. I'm like, dude, did you did you see how they had just treated you? Did you feel like it's like we've seen it right like on television or in real life, but it's like. You feel icky, you feel bad, you feel wrong. I remember once I told um, I told a guy, I was like, I'm going to be real with you. Like, every time I hang out with you, and I, I couldn't quite put it in words yet because I was still growing. I was like 21. I was like, I can't, I can't quite understand why, but when I hang out with you, I get the same feeling I get when I go get fast food in the middle of the night after I tell myself that I'm going to stop eating junk. I was like, yeah, I get the same feeling. Every time I'm with you, it's the exact same feeling of like when I eat junk after I'm not supposed to, which, you know, it was probably a little too blown on the nose, but that's the moment I connected. I was like, no, sometimes you do stuff because it's patterns and your brain is optimized for like efficiency. So your brain goes, okay, what have we been doing? All right, let's, let's put that on automation. And so they're like, okay, let's automatically do it. And it become a habit because it's like, let's just make it easier for ourselves and put it on a loop go 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 and then once your brain puts something on the loop it's hard to stop and until your brain puts something on the loop it's hard to start so it's like you just don't want to do it because it's hard you just don't want to do it because there's no instant gratification for it you just don't want to do it because it sucks to cry a lot until you feel better but you have to cry or else you're never gonna feel better you have to let it go or else you're never gonna feel better like that's just that's just the name of the game that's just humanity like that's just how it goes I'm sorry like it is just the way it is where did I get it um it's a doll's kill oh thank you for listening to my alone is holy yay that's exactly what it's written for to help you through hard times that makes me so happy thank you for the hearts Christina um you know it's it's like Nobody's saying it's not hard, but we are saying get a grip. 
<laughs> you can do both. You can be like, oh, this is hard. I say I do I do both all the time. All the time. I like have a tantrum, cry my eyes out, scream and holler in the privacy of my own space, and then I go do what I need to do. I was like, first off, I'm gonna cry and get it done, okay? Notoriously, sometimes at the same time, sometimes I'm crying and I'm doing, and I'm like, I don't wanna do it, I don't feel like it. <laughs> and I'm doing it, I don't wanna be here right now, but I am because I want something different. You gotta do it what and it's like especially if you have certain cultural backgrounds and you like you don't see i'ma say it i'ma say it i'ma say it. i know my family's story i know my family's history like even the story of how like my family ended up in tennessee like my grandmother had to flee from a small town in mississippi because there were like white people threatening to burn her house down with her and her children in it she had to leave all her stuff belongings behind most of her family and leave do you think she wanted to do it no but she wanted to be alive she didn't go oh it's hard i'm just conflicted because i don't want to leave and i don't want to lose everything i have but i don't want to die she didn't she's like okay all right all right we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go which is a, which is a cutting and running is a trauma in and of itself but what do I look like being like ah oh, it's too hard to get over this man that makes my life harder when I want better and my grandmother's like I literally gave up everything for safety and security and for the continue so that you could exist and I'm gonna chip about it like I can chip about it because my pain is my pain my sorrow is my sorrow but it's like does it make sense like harder things have been done and so it's like should we be comparing apples to oranges like tragedy is tragedy we're not in a competition but sometimes we need to compare it a little bit to be like people have done hard things before and um i'm not the first human to try to do something hard i'm not the first human to get over heartbreak i'm not the first human to encounter discomfort and when you see people doing stuff you want to do it doesn't mean it was easy for them it doesn't necessarily mean they have privilege but it does mean they have balls <laughs> you know what i mean and so it's like when you see somebody doing the hard thing maybe you don't need to get angry maybe it should be proof because that's what i used to do i don't know i i don't know why i don't know why i have this disposition but i kind of grew up understanding that a human is a human is a human and so when i would see a human doing something that i thought can be done i'm like oh so i can do it <laughs> like it, it didn't make me angry didn't make me feel bad sometimes it did it made me feel a little jealous but jealousy kind of became this thing that activated me because i was like oh this is so dumb i'm just sitting here burning up and i just go ask her a question I was like I'm over here hating I'm mad at her for doing something that I'm not and then I was like hey can I ask you some questions like I just like push my let me ask her some questions maybe she'll know and if she doesn't want to answer that's okay uh, I'm gonna go f now I'm gonna figure it out out of spite now I'm gonna be like look I figured it out without you and she's like okay was never invested in me you know what I'm saying so it's like does it make sense to be like you know oh I just hate people who are in happy relationships maybe I should go like maybe I have the power to have a happy relationship too, instead of deciding that what happened before is destiny. Maybe I should think about that a little more. Maybe I should think about why I'm so unhappy in relationships. Maybe I should think about why I don't feel attracted to people who are attracted to me. Should I be angry that people are happy or should I be like angry with myself? Hard to do, I know, nobody wants to do it. It's easier to be angry at the people who have what you have. I know, it's like, mm, and you can just stay how you are and you can never be like, I could have been doing something different. You don't have to feel like you wasted time because there was never anything else you could have done. You could have been doing something else the whole time, but it's okay. You can start today. You can start today. You got the rest of your life. You got the rest of your life to keep doing what you know makes you miserable or you got the rest of your life to try the way I see it and it's like but people were like oh if I try and I succeed then it means I waste the time and the time will pass anyway <laughs> that's I was like look you know I don't know what the outcome is I don't know if it can be different I don't know it might be fate but if it's fate I got fists for fate I'm not going down without a fight because I don't want to do this anymore. I'm that uncom I'm so uncomfortable. I am so unhinged and uncomfortable that either I'm gonna figure it out or I am I'm going to I'm going to disappear on the live trying. It's like, but this isn't it. You have to let the discomfort overcome the fear of not knowing. A lot of y'all like to sit in misery because at least it's familiar. At least it's predictable. At least you know what's gonna happen. At least it gives you a false sense of power and control to know that your life could be miserable forever.
and you could just get your kicks back by being miserable and hating people who did something different but at some point you gotta grow the hell up and do something different it's okay it's okay grieve cry be angry there's space for all of that and getting it done all the time i kick holler and scream and like ah why was i giving these circumstances this is not fair it's not fair but it's also not fair to me to become aware that I could be different and do nothing. Now I'm the person that abandoned me if I do that. I don't want to be the next person in the chain of people who forgot me, left me behind. And no, I don't want to do that. I think I could be my own hero. I don't know how to, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do something. And I'm going to try it. And then sometimes once you do that, it's like the sky opens and something crazy happens call like a miracle or whatever uh as like i'm not necessarily a religious person but i have noticed i'll do one two and three not knowing how four and five are gonna happen and then like what a four and five will appear it's crazy like when i was first trying to get an apartment in la i was like i'm super broke first when i was first trying to get an apartment in la i didn't have a job so i was like i don't know but i'm <laughs> I don't know and uh but I was googling and I was looking I was looking at all the stuff and I found this thing it was like a housing lottery and it was like it only took like 300 people and you already know because it's LA it's like it's gonna be tens of thousand people applying so I was like I don't know I'm put my hat in the ring because it makes sense so I was looking at stuff that didn't make sense like luxury apartments but then I was looking at stuff that was a little more practical but still didn't make sense because it was too much I was like I don't know but I don't want to do it and then I don't know some things happened time went by it wasn't instant i didn't wake up the next day to something different for real so a lot of people quit because they overdose on hope and they give up i don't really believe in hope hope is like this weird thing where you think things materialize from nothing what i believe in is believing that um keeping an open mind is the way i think about it like i'm just gonna keep doing what i can do and i'm not gonna force an ideal of an outcome into my head I'm just gonna be happy about whatever positive because like hope is weird hope is a weird thing so the open oh so hope so it didn't happen like the next day in fact i think i applied for a housing lottery on like uh, i think it was like a december and then january february march april may it was may before i got a job so like five almost six whole months before i got a good job cool and then june july two more months so like what like what is that eight months total before I heard that I was selected in the housing lottery, like almost a whole year. But if I would have on the second month been like, oh, it's not for me and just gave up on looking for a job, I would not have had a job by the time the housing lottery picked me. So it's like a lot of time had to go by for me to commit to like just taking the baby steps, taking the baby steps, right? It doesn't happen overnight. You got to stick with it. They're like, well, I tried to have hope and faith and it didn't work. Okay, well, keep going okay like if it's kind of working then keep going like why, why why are we giving like why do you need it to be instantaneous like we see people like attack their destinies over years over times like think about like some of the greatest films or works of art we've ever seen they, they talk about the years it took to make it the years it takes to, like people i don't know i don't know if it's like the internet or if the self-comparison but we just decide that nothing is worth trying if you can't have it tomorrow when if you just start today eventually the day that it's going to happen is going to be tomorrow you just got to keep, keep your feet going so it's like it's like eight whole months and it's still a miracle it's still a miracle like out of tens of thousands of people i was like one of 300 that got selected for a housing lottery so it was like affordable housing. you know it's like, like what do you mean like you got it but if i had not tried if i would have been like well i don't have a job so it doesn't make sense to google options never would happen so it's like there's something weird that happens when you invest yourself in just doing what you can do and like a lot of that time it's like well i'm just gonna apply to a couple of things a day and then i started taking like classes on skillshare um and getting little certifications but also the certifications made me do like little projects and so i would do like these little graphic design projects little editing project and then like what happened six seven months went by over six months i had like a full portfolio of cool stuff that put me in, in a different pay rage when it was time to like apply for different stuff and so all of a sudden i had a full portfolio of proof of work for a job i had never had before but i had like experience through the stuff i created so i still qualify for the job you see what i mean but because i was like I, I don't have a job but i was like also i guess i could just be learning stuff that's cool and that's the other thing i was doing it not based on what i thought would make me a lot of money i was doing it based on what i was like okay well i always wanted to learn how to be a graphic designer why not i'll take a little course 
and now all of a sudden I had skill sets and a qualification to be a professional graphic designer. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was first doing my first record, uh, I was really bummed out actually because um, I had already graduated from Berkeley and while I was at Berkeley I've been writing for a number of publishers um, like Universal London, like I thought I was in there. I'm like, cool, I'm about to be a signed writer. And so for those of you who don't know, I sing, but like primarily I'm a writer. I write for a lot of other artists. So I was like, cool. And then like, uh, they didn't want to give me a visa. And then the US, whatever, whatever, didn't really want me. And so I was like, ah, oh, so close to being a professional signed writer. I want to be a writer. And then I heard it in my head. I was like, bitch, ain't nothing stopping you from writing every day. Like, just because ain't nobody giving you money for it yet. Like, <laughs> nothing is stopping you from writing songs every day. And then I was like, oh, okay, what if I just like, and so I started writing songs every day. And for accountability, I started pay posting it on like my Facebook page. And a lot of time went by, they, none of them went viral. Let's, let's start there. They didn't go viral. They did not go viral. But the people who were already in my life saw me doing this consistently and they got really into what I was doing and then one day when I, I decided I had a bunch of songs that I liked and I was like I think I kind of want to record some of these um I was like I ain't got no money for the studio or a record and so I was like well I don't think uh GoFundMe is gonna work for me I don't think it's possible but I'm gonna try and what happened was I posted like the little GoFundMe and my whole album was funded within 24 hours because all the people who had been watching me put without going viral just all the people who have been watching me uh post music every day was really into it and so they all donated because they were already engaged and they're like oh you're well you're already doing it because a lot of times with fundraising they just want to know that you're capable of doing with the funds what you say you're going to do so a lot of times it's not that people don't support you or they don't care about you but it's like you know you're raising books for a film but you've never even like or books you're raising money for a film but you've never even posted like a 60 second film a 60 second visual story you never even done that much you know what I'm saying so like it's not that they don't support you they're like well if I have five dollars for this and she might not get it done five dollars for maybe a coffee I think I'm just gonna get the coffee but like when you kind of have like a proof of purchase where people can see you and so like people are like she already writes songs every day we already kind of into it so I'll throw her 10 or 20 dollars and like really like I said at that time I had less than a thousand people on my Facebook and the whole thing was funded with 40 people and so it's like I think we think you got to have a million followers I was like no but you got to have people who can see what you're doing and like kind of get because sometimes I, I don't even think people have to be bought in sometimes people some people were like I just think it's cool I don't know just, they were like I don't really think you make the kind of music that I'm I like listening to but I really dig that you care enough to do this every day <laughs> like sometimes people just think it's cool that you're doing something you know what I'm saying but they want to know you're going to get it done it's just like it's not people aren't hating on you if they don't donate people aren't hating on you if they don't follow they just might not be into the thing that you do um but you don't have to have millions and thousands of out even thousands of eyes on you you just gotta have like really 40 or 50 people that think you're kind of cool and then eventually maybe hundreds a couple hundred people who think you're kind of cool and consistent enough to get it done you know what I mean uh they say teamwork make that dream work but you having personal accountability and consistency will really make that team the dream work more than anything you attract the team by becoming the superpower you know what i'm saying by being the steam by being the engine by being the vision but like nobody wants to follow a leader who doesn't seem to have a clear vision that's uncomfortable that's weird what's happening i don't know you know what i'm saying like we were talking about carrie but then we got on this other tangent of like what types of pe people identify with carrie and then really what kind of choices can you make to not be carrie because that's really what it's about we're talking about how to dive we talk about Ka carrie carrie bradshaw and like what's narcissistic about her and what makes her a bad friend to be around and once we identify that we're like okay what can we do next and i think that's what miss ken ken was missing in her little article is that she's not she's not one of us she don't come here often it's okay um but that's what we do we evaluate things to understand them better so that we can make different choices so we can choose to be different choose different patterns choose different relationships why does it matter if carrie bradshaw is the worst because we need to be able to recognize it in our real lives is we don't want to be bradshaw we don't want to be like 38 chasing a 98 year old man who has commitment issues you know what i'm saying like we don't want that i mean if you into it, you're into it if you're into it you're into it uh no shade no harm no nothing but we we just don't do that 
around here. You know, like we like, we want to have functional lives that make sense. And if we make mistakes, that's cool. But we're trying. Like you can't be so afraid of mistakes that you never ever ever actually try. You gotta try to grow and do something different. Which is why I also on these lives I try to try something new. Like one curling my hair, which was not working. We'll do a wig next time, I guess. I don't know. It was just not working. But I mean, the front looked okay. And last week, yeah, last Friday, um, I tried to recreate a 60s inspired makeup look from Pinterest. It looked crazy, but it was fun to do. I mean, it's just, it's just fun to like try new stuff sometimes. And sometimes by doing something completely out of the box and new, that's not necessarily you, you kind of unlock this realization that you can try new things like if you try something new that you're not particularly good at the world doesn't end and sometimes your brain just needs that realization do you know do you know what I mean like when I started redesigning my room I was like okay I don't really know how to put up wallpaper but I want to do it so we're gonna figure it out and I mean it's not perfect for sure I'm not gonna show you where the imperfections are if you don't see them but they're there and I'm not ashamed because I know it's my first time and then I started looking for like thrifted uh, frames because I was like I would really like to create a very <laughs> I would really like to create like a cool little aesthetic in my space you know because I was like I don't necessarily live in an aesthetic home but I was like that doesn't have to stop me from making it on my own you know what I'm saying and now I get to live in a, a space that I feel is luxurious without paying luxury prices jokes on you and so I was like I'm gonna put up my charcoal stone looking thing I, and I went through this was ten dollars I found this for ten dollars it looks so cool you know what I mean and so I was like I have the power to make my space as cool as possible on the budget that I have you know, it's, it's like sometimes just by trying things. And then when I did that, I was like, what else can I do? What else can I do that I previously thought I couldn't do? What else can I change for myself that I previously thought that I couldn't change for myself? Sometimes you got to do one little thing that shows you that life can be different. You know what I'm saying? Like, just try. You don't have to fall out all out and cry about it. Just try something. And then, or you can fall all out and cry about it and try. But it's nobody else's fault. It's not... I mean, it might have originated with your family, your 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 your, your parents, your your siblings. Blah, 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 blah. But now we're now we're older. Now we we have a little more autonomy. We have personal choice. Nobody's like locking us in the house. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then if you got a little, a little fun, you know, it's it's okay. Like, you don't have to do things the same way everybody else did it. Like, you don't have to repeat their stuff and feel like a failure because you can't do it the way they did it. But you can do something. You can do something. Because even at my brokest, I used to go outside and be like, I have just decided I'm going to have a good day. And weirdly, I would, like, one day, I sh do not. I was like, I want to go out, but I don't have any money. But I'm tired of being in the house. And I'm tired of being in the house and just thinking about the fact that I have no money and feeling sad. And so I left my home with negative $34 in my bank account at the day of my life. Um, like I just was walking around because I was like, I'm not going to burn any gas. I went walking. Uh, and like one of the first things I bumped into was like the city had put up like a skating rink. Uh, to celebrate like the holidays coming up and because it was the first day it was opening everybody could go ice skating for free So I went ice skating completely free of charge because I just happened to bump into that and then uh, I kept walking around and I bumped into some people who were giving away like free tote bags and I was like, okay, I got a tote bag and then I found like this free like dinner thing Like just because I went outside none of that stuff would have happened if I would have stayed in the house and I would have been convinced Oh, I can't do fun stuff because I have negative $34 in my bank account, but with negative $34 in my bank account, I went ice skating, I had dinner, I got a tote bag. The night of my life that night. Just because I was like, I'm just going to go outside and see what happens. I didn't go outside and go, I hope and I just know that something good's going to happen. I didn't set myself up for failure. right? I didn't, I didn't set a bar. I just went outside and said, I think good stuff can happen. I think I can enjoy myself. And that's what I try to do. I got, like, what's the most fun I can have under these circumstances? Like, maybe the most fun I can have ever is like... I don't know, going, hanging out in a posh, posh, chic um, art museum in Soho, but I can't fly to New York right now and I can't get into 
a chic museum but I can maybe like go find a five dollar frame that looks like it should be in a museum and paint it and make it look a little cool you know so like what is the most fun I can have like maybe it's like sometimes it's grooming in the dog because he's so funny and I like playing in his fur and his hair and like, making little designs like playing in my hair and then like even with like makeup look I did last week I went to the five and below because I was like I'm not one of the influencers that can do like $300 hauls but I can go get $30 worth of like drugstore make makeup and see what I and it's fun it's an experiment people are afraid to experiment uh I'm gonna read comments now hi day says daily uh yeah you know try new makeup um just try you won't know honestly you can't figure out who you are until you try stuff I don't know how other people's elementary schools were set up but like when I was in elementary and maybe even in like middle school for a little bit they called um the extracurricular stuff uh that you do during school they called it exploratory hour right and so like I think in high school it's like an elective but in, they call it exploratory and you weren't allowed to commit to one thing or the other so you have to try gym you have to try art you have to try home ec, which was like cooking. You have to try band. Uh, I mean, you don't have to try everything, but I think you had to at least try like three or four things. And it was called exploratory because like, you don't know what you, you don't know what you like until you have access to something to try it. There's exposure makes the difference. That's why representation matters. That's why getting out into the world, ah, money is dangerous. Okay. Well, it's also dangerous to sit in your room alone and stew. So get a I don't know get a, a rhymes with nice put it in your pocket <laughs> and be willing to <laughs> if somebody walks up on you crazy but it's like you gotta fight for your life like you there's always gonna be an excuse to rot there's always gonna be an excuse to rot and so either you you know and you gotta pick one so either you're gonna rot period or you're gonna complain and change but a lot of people like to rot and complain like my life is so miserable and I wish I could be you, but I'm not. Okay, change it. I can't because I'm afraid of going outside because I watch the news and every day on the news something bad happens. So now I'm just mad. And you must be able to go outside because you must be better than me or be privileged. Or I don't let the fear stop me. I understand what the risks are and I do it anyway. I make a good plan and I do it anyway. So it's like, you gotta pick one you gotta rot you're gonna try you're gonna give up and then if you decide you're gonna rot and give up that's also on you because so I got into like a little tussle with somebody in the comment section and they're like oh you're such a bad person uh, and maybe I am but like she came into my comment section and was like I don't like these videos that you make about positive things because they don't apply to me in my situation because here's why I can't Chain, basically she's like here's why I don't have access to like making friends and she listed all the stuff and I was like I already addressed a lot of this in other videos she's like well I just don't have access to that and you're just different because you probably had different access and I was like well if you gen you know yourself better than I do and so if you genuinely believe that you were here to die alone and never have friends and be miserable I believe you and she lost her mind I'm like what else you want me to do like we had a conversation you said none of that would help you I don't know babe maybe you maybe you should rot rot <laughs> like it's your choice it's like a lot of, which comes back to like the victim complex people want to complain and feel hopeless thank you for the universe people want to complain and feel hopeless but like uh they don't want help because that makes them upset and then they don't want you to leave them alone. I'm like, what am I going to do? Come be miserable with you? I'm not. I'm going to keep trying. That's what I'm going to do. So it's like, dang, that does suck. People are like, my life is so horrible. Here's why. And I'm like, have you tried X, Y, and Z? They're like, well, I can't do that because. And I'll be like, oh, okay, well, I guess it is. Suck. It does suck. I'm so sorry your life sucks. Um, I'm going to go do something else now. <laughs> and it's like, there's empathy, but then there's also like commiserating. And I'm never going to do the latter. I'm like, man, I hope you figure that out. Uh, but a lot of times people are like, well, I can't, I can't figure it out and it's never going to be different. And to that, I usually like, well, I just believe you. I just, I'm just going to have to believe you because I don't know your life and I don't hang out with you every day. Cause that's the other thing. I'm also a little slow to, um, support people's personal crusade of like why things are the way they are for them. And I'm going to explain that, right? Hi, Christina. Hey, Ari. 
because like I'm very aware of the fact that when I'm first meeting somebody getting to know them I don't have the full story and then we all kind of like center ourselves as like the protagonist like most people don't naturally consider how they show up in the world how they play a part in their own story and how they impact other people that's just something I'm super aware of and so like sometimes people will tell me stuff like there was this guy they're saying yeah um well I feel like we intuitively know to do this with men when they start talking about their exes being crazy we intuitively like, well what did you do but I guess my point is like you should do that with everybody so even when a woman comes up to you I'm like yeah for whatever reason those girls over there they've always been weird with me like they're just kind of mean they're so stuck up as soon as somebody says something like that to me I'm like okay I'm just gonna take it with a grain of salt because I don't know what you did to those people I don't know what created the song I don't know what you played like I don't know who you I don't know who you are past what you present me and back to the point that I'm making so when people start talking about how like there's nothing I can do there's no possible way I could ever try to make my own life better I don't actually know them enough to advocate against that because I don't know their lives like and then honestly if it's in their head that they can't then they can't the cliche saying is true if you think you can't you can't if you think you can, you will. Usually, if you think you can, you kind of figure it out. Like, in my experience, it's like sometimes their day, and it can be trivial stuff too. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how. It's like, I don't know how I'm going to, because I'll just decide, like, I want to go out uh, or I want to do a photo shoot or something creative. I was like, but I need, like, a dress to all have, like, a scene in my head. It's like, I actually really need, it's like, I'm going to film the scene in the hotel I really need a dress so I can make this look good. I don't, can't afford a dress, can't buy a dress. I was like, but I wake up and I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna get a dress today, but I'm gonna get a dress and it's gonna be the dress that I need to get this project done. I'll just, I don't know. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna go somewhere. I'm gonna check some things out. I'm gonna like maybe go look at eBay, look at Facebook Market check in with some people and sometimes I even check in with people say hey do you have a dress so a lot of times I'll just like I feel like calling um Tori and so I'll just call Tori ask her how her day is just have a natural conversation and then she might magically say oh I was cleaning out my closet and I have this old dress from so-and-so but I don't feel like taking it to Goodwill and I'll be like oh, I actually need a dress you know what I'm saying like I just kind of feel like once you just decide that you're gonna do something and you just go about your day I don't know like mm, it's not that problem solving is bad but sometimes when you're thinking out about a problem you can only think about how to solve it in traditional ways if that makes sense and so you start thinking about the traditional ways to solve the, pro the problem even though you know you don't have access to those traditional ways like in the example I need a dress in the traditional way to remedy that that would be like buy it get some money I was like well I don't have access to that uh or whatever it is you know what I mean and so it's like but if you kind of put yourself in this place where um you kind of step away from the problem which forces you to think about traditional solving I don't know I don't care what people say it's hard to think about out-of-box solutions when you were actively thinking about something it's like you got to go do something else to get an inspiration it's like in the shower it's when you go for a run it's like when you happen to hear somebody talking about something else the dots kind of naturally connect where they should have you guys noticed that have you noticed it's like if you stop thinking about an issue and you go do something else it's like all of a sudden something will spark and it'll bring you back to a, a solution that you never would have thought about over here like oh I never never would have thought about like getting something done like this and you know and a lot of times it is through either through people or just I I love human beings can I just say that because a lot of people are like oh I hate people um and I think people might think that I feel that way too because I'm I'm not I'm not I'm an introvert so I'm not like what's the word I don't want to say antisocial because people use that incorrectly um but I'm not shy that's what it is I'm not shy clearly but like I do feel really drained when I have to entertain people for long periods of time and so I don't naturally but I really find people fascinating I like to observe like if I could I'd be one of those people that just sat in the park with a good book because I like books but I'd mostly just be watching human nature because I'm just so fascinated 
what isn't that how like anthropology was invented people just like <laughs> understanding anthropology and psychology is like why do people do that like i don't know i just have this fascination of like what's going on why are people doing it and why is this happening i like to think too but so philosophy it's like why are these i see what's happening why is it happening it's a big thing for me uh <laughs> But we are all off topic. I'm trying to read the sticker on the TikTok thing. It says something about Discord. I think we can now connect Discord to TikTok, which is interesting. And I just wonder how beneficial it will be. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what this means. I don't like that TikTok gives you all these little options right in the middle of the stream because I'm trying to talk and I'm trying to do stuff and I'm trying to like read at the same time. But yeah. Let's do like a quick check in because like we're getting to the end of our second hour and I usually on the stream for a couple hours because right now, you know, my block is not hot and so it's not a popular stream yet. It will be. I feel very strongly it is. I really enjoy this. Um, but, you know, before we wrap for the day going into um, the end of this hour, how are you guys? Like how has, does your Friday rocks? Does Friday rocks rock for you? Are the things that you're looking forward to? Do you have your own personal rituals? Oh, and also, if you're still watching, on Discord, we're going to start playing, I don't know, like, what is impos the imposter game? Among Us and something else. I think on Wednesday nights. I was supposed to do it this last week, but I was so sick that I just couldn't bring myself to, like, participate. Thank you, Patrick. Um, but if you're into playing online games and you want it, something to do on Wednesday nights, join my Discord. Um, it's gonna be in a link in bio play somewhere <laughs> or in the description box um, because it would just be really cool. If one, we have more people in the Discord for discussions. We talk about a lot of the stuff that I talk about in my videos from like dating, uh, personal growth, all those things. We talk about all those things on the Discord and it's just like a safe area. If you wanted to discuss these ideas among like-minded people without trolls, without maybe talking to people in your life that you're not don't quite want to be vulnerable with yet the discord is a good place for that and i'm there too so you can chat with me about stuff if you like my my ideas about life um so all that but also i wanted us to have more rituals you know so it's like on wednesdays i think it'd be cool if we played online games and we could do multiple ones back to back it's okay if you want to be in the game that I'm in, but like, you know, you can play with the other people in the Discord, make friends, because maybe down the line we might have like in-person meetups. I'm not saying that yet. I'm not promising that that yet. You know, we gotta suss out the vibes of who's all in the Discord. But I would think that I think that's I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, so if you'd like to come hang out in the Discord with us to play online games and have discussions and be plugged in as soon every time i go live every friday or if i add more streams to the schedule join discord join the discord but how are you guys you guys are quiet there's at least eight people across all two platforms <laughs> say hello little chit chat little check-in especially when i grab some water thank you for being here can i just say that i'm fussing at y'all for not talking but can I just say, I'm really glad that you're with me. Like, small but mighty is a thing to me. And I'm so appreciative. Kenya, you're back. Hello. It's good to see you again. So it's really fun for me. And it's kind of like a content cheat, I think. Um, because it's like, now I get content streamed directly without like having to make a bunch of mini videos. It's a lot of fun. And it's a new adventure for me. The whole concept of streaming live is a new adventure and it's a new challenge. Um, it's also maybe like a ego get death, I guess. I mean, a little bit, maybe not a lot because I've never felt entitled necessarily to being a popular creator. There are times that I feel really upset that I have built a platform and then say a platforms won't show my stuff to the people who want to see it. So that will piss me off sometimes, but I never felt entitled to going viral in general and growing and so like I don't necessarily have an ego death by the fact that my streams are a baby but it is a little humbling to remember that like you have to build things up but it's also fun it's different because it's like yeah you know like I'm almost at 70k on Instagram we had a quarter million on TikTok 
60k on Facebook and so of course I still have some big milestones but you know across all platforms I get maybe like 20 to 30 million views every month you know and so it's like it's kind of nice to like push for something yay get people into the streams yay get people to like subscribe on YouTube get people to join the discord it's a lot of fun and gifts like thank you so much for all the beautiful gifts Kenya um the chili the corn all the food I feel like I'm gonna go eat after this the flowers thank you so much for the gifts and you know like I said just thank you for being here because I just think it's important to have like weekly rituals places to be places to gather and like now that religion's not a huge thing I think it's some it's missing from a lot of our lives not to say that you have to have religion but like some kind of consistency something to look forward to every week like I heard the quote once, happiness is having something to look forward to. And I really, 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 really resonate with that. You know, like that's deep. Hi, Ricky Ricardo. What a name. I just want to say my grandmother loves, I love Lucy. So I'm a, I'm very excited that you're here, Ricky Ricardo. It means a lot to me. I am in fact going to tell my grandmother I met Ricky Ricardo. She's going to think I'm a real hot shot. So thank you for being here, Ricky. <laughs> um and thank you to everybody for being here um we are probably gonna hop off a little early because like i feel like i'm starting to ramble and i do kind of have this thing and i set this intention like i don't want to talk just to talk just to fill the space i always want to speak with intention i want to say things that matter to people that mean something i think when people start talking to talk that's when and they have a platform that's when things go a little bad you know like yes show up do what you gotta do especially if you want to be a streamer show up because you're supposed to show up but it's like a little too much hot air talking can lead to saying the wrong things or things that, you know what i'm saying like i do try to meditate before i go on i'm like let me say what it's the most helpful for the people who are gonna arrive i don't go i don't say bring me tens of thousands of people bring me the people who need to be here bring me the people who need to hear what i gotta say let me say what the people who are gonna be there need to hear so i try to do that so i try not to like ramble uh modern therapy hi hi figured out how to come in yay i'm so glad i'm so glad that you're here makes me so excited um but yeah like i said thank you for tuning in this has been a lot of fun um the re replay as always is gonna be published on youtube so make sure you check that out that you subscribe that you like that you comment on that one too and if you just want to chat with me a little bit afterwards you can find me in the uh the discord so thank you for hanging out guys happy friday